There's something that's going on these days that I cannot ignore. Asbury University, they started a chapel service last February 8, 2023. They usually have chapel service three times a week, but this time it was different. There was a student of the school who confessed a sin, and there were about 30 other people who stayed to seek God. But later on, they just kept going and going. So I'll be talking about revival, the good things that I've been seeing in this spontaneous event, and some of my concerns as a youth leader, a millennial, and someone who wants to minister to the next generation. You'll be hearing my thoughts. So if you're up for that, then stay tuned. Hello friends and family, I'm Hannah and if you're new here, this channel aims to encourage the next generation to take in God's word and live it out in today's culture. And if that's what you're looking for, consider subscribing. So I live in the West Coast and thanks to a few people that have been live streaming the event, shout out to you guys. I've been joining online, worshiping along and also observing. And right now at this moment of filming, they are still going on. Let's talk a little bit about revival. My source is Pastor Greg Laurie and he says that revival is refreshment. It's the restoration of something that has once been. It's when God's people come back to life again. Notice that it says God's people. So revival is actually for the believers. The word for the non-believers is actually spiritual awakening. An illustration that Pastor Greg used in talking about revival was the life of Jonah. Jonah was called by God to minister to the people of Nineveh and to warn them that if they are not going to repent of their sins, if they're not in a change, their city is going to be destroyed. So the thing about Jonah is that he didn't want to do it. Jonah had this hatred toward the people of Nineveh. So he went the opposite way. But while he was on his way there, there were a lot of challenges. Fast forward, he was eaten by this big fish. And during that time he was inside there, he had a revival. He was spit out by the big fish and he went on and did the calling that God had for him. And because of that, they had a spiritual awakening. Now going back to what's been happening in Asbury University, my first reaction was that it was awesome. I have a passion for the next generation. I actually remember the first time that I witnessed this, even just online and seeing that happening all together in fellowship, people praying for each other. I I just found myself in tears with so much that's going on. There's a lot of toxicity. There are tensions in different aisles in politics. We can hear about wars. And then we hear about these college students and they're just worshiping their hearts out. And that actually gave me something good to think about. I think that a lot of people right now who are even watching this or whoever sees this event happening, all of us are encouraged. It kind of reminds me of the times when I was a youth myself. I was at youth camp. The last night of youth camp always has something great going on. There was this one time when someone just shouted out to the Lord and that became the start of everyone just being vulnerable and they just cried out to God. It was such a sweet moment and I believe that that's what's going on in this event right now. The difference is that it's been going on for days. They're just having fellowship with each other. It's a relaxed environment. I was watching an interview by one of the anchors of CBN. He was interviewing a senior of the school and she mentioned that usually there would be cliques in, within the group because it is college. But this time around, people were just saying, hey, how are you doing? Some people would usually just say, I'm fine. But this time, they were like, no, really, how are you doing? People were just being real. Another thing I noticed about this senior was that she was humble to say that you're invited to come, but you can worship God wherever you are. And I'm glad that she gave that reminder. You don't have to be in their chapel so that they could feel the presence of God. And that's a really important thing. I'm glad that she got that in check. So there was some preaching, there was some scripture reading, there were testimonies, people praying for each other, and then there was a lot of worshiping in song. Most of the songs that they've been playing were actually the Christian contemporary songs. 
I did see in the videos that there were adults involved, so there is guidance that's going on here. Another good thing that I saw was that I heard that there were some certain groups that are not really sound in their teaching. They went there and they talked to the leaders of the school, but these leaders actually rejected them from speaking on the platform. So I think that was a really good thing. And I do believe that the Holy Spirit is working right now. Now, I do have some concerns with regard to the Gen Zers. The first thing is that I'm hoping that they don't feel a lot of pressure with what's going on. And I'm sure that there's that feeling of some tiredness, of some burnout. This is an age of social media. It's been spreading. I just talked to someone who's a missionary in the Philippines who works with the youth, and he's been seeing it online as well. So it's spreading all over the world. And though that's a good thing, but at the same time, I'm thinking and I'm hoping that these kids are not being pressured to just keep it going. I hope that they don't feel overwhelmed by all of the coverage that they're getting. Now, another thing that I was concerned about was being able to concentrate on their studies. So I know that it started February 8th and now it's Feb 16. I just heard that they did cancel the rest of their classes for the week, which is Thursday and Friday. I mean, praise God because that they have this medium, they have chapel time so that they can just take a break from everything that they're doing but then while they're in their classes I was wondering if they were getting distracted if they were able to concentrate during their classes so that's another thing that I was concerned about and I hope that there won't be too many cancellations for too long I mean I'm a teacher myself I understand how precious each day is I know that we can be a, te a good testimony a good role model for people who are not Christians is how we do our roles in this world. We can be good students, good stewards of what we have. And I think that that's important to do too. There's a time to worship God. There's a time to do our responsibilities. And so there has to be that balance as well, I believe. We have to do things and be responsible with what we have to do. Another thing that I'm concerned about is the long-lasting effect. I've been a camper myself for many years. One thing that I observe is that after the first few days of youth camp, everyone's just on fire, they want to keep on being together. But as reality hits in, school, work, family, all of those things, the fire just dies down a bit. I'm praying that this is not just a moment. All of the things they've been testifying about, I hope that it continues. I hope that there would be continued discipleship by either the teachers or maybe seniors could be disciplers of the younger generation, even younger generation. I hope that it reaches out to even those that are not believers. This is something that is affecting the Christian community. And I'm hoping that there is a spiritual awakening happening. I hope that after witnessing this, we can actually witness to others so that they would experience what we're feeling. Be a part of a church and commit in it. Have that sweet moment of worship wherever you are, even if it's in the quietness and the comfort of your own home. And sure, you can join events like this. There's nothing wrong with that. It's great, actually. But let's worship God in everything that we do. As Colossians said, have accountability. And that's a very important thing. And I talk more about that in this video. If you like content like this, reflections, Bible studies, testimonies that are catered to the next generation, feel free to subscribe. Our hope and future is in Jesus. See you in the next video.